let's take a few minutes to talk about selection techniques in Photoshop. Now what we mean by selection is taking a part of an image and removing it, taking it out, and then using it to create either a new image or maybe integrating it into another existing image. Now I just want to go over some basic ways you can do this. And Photoshop has got a lot of good tools for making selections. Let's look at an obvious one, the rectangular marquee tool. Now I've got a picture of a bird here and let's say I just want to select the head say I want to print it on a postage stamp or something. I'm going to copy it, create a new file, and notice the dimensions of my new file will conform to the contents of the clipboard. That is the bird's head. So now I've got a new image, I can do whatever I need to do to it, and then print it off. And that's the marquee tool. Okay, let's look at a different selection tool. I'm going to go on down here to the lasso tool. Okay, this is designed for making freeform selections. Now I've got this uh, shadow image here in front of me, and let's say I just want to do a kind of um, sort of a goofy artistic thing here. The freeform selections you see me doing here, and I'm not trying to be real accurate at all. I mainly just want you to see that I can draw any kind of irregular shape with this tool. In this case, just the area around the shadow. So notice I let the mouse up, okay, and I've got selection activated. Okay, I'm going to go to my layer menu. Let's make a new fill layer. Solid color. I'm going to make it, I will make it a gray color. Now since I had that selected, notice what happened. The fill layer automatically went in my selection. So that's kind of neat. Let's take this a step further. I'm going to make another fill layer, another solid color, and we're going to go with the default black. Now I'm going to move this under my other layer. So now I've got sort of the shadow silhouette turned kind of an off-white and onto a black background. Let's finish this up by adding uh, a little bit of text over top of here. Let's. Um, Let's get a larger font size. We'll start with 54. That ought to be fine. We'll choose Verdana and let's um. Oh, you know, let's go pretty, pretty light. We'll say where am I? Let's make that a little bit bigger. Maybe not that big. I'm sorry, our move tool. Move that out to there. Let's put where am I on top. I'm going to reduce the opacity on my cutout image a little bit. Make that text a little more readable. Alright. Adjustment there. And that's how you can take an image. Uh, if I hide all my layers, I can see the source. You can take an image that looks like that and just kind of make... Um, sort of a goofy little piece of art out of it. Let's look at another version of the lasso tool before we leave the subject. You saw how the regular lasso worked. Well, we've got a couple other types of lassos. Let's have a look at the magnetic lasso tool. And notice as I'm just dragging along the border of the bunny here, you can see that the magnetic lasso tool actually kind of hugs the border of the object you're selecting. And again, this is still a free-form selection. I'm just dragging around this object. But I have a little bit more control how the selection is working here. With the regular lasso tool, I could at best approximate this. And since I'm maybe going to do something a little more cleaned up and meaningful, than what I did last time, I want to be a little more accurate. And there we are. Copy. Make a new layer. I'm going to deselect. Hide the background and paste. And there's my bunny.
Okay, let's look at another common selection technique. I'm going to go down to the magic wand tool here, and I'm just going to click the background of my image. Now this is kind of a best case scenario for the magic wand because we have a solid color background and we have a solid color foreground, that is black on white. When you click something with the magic wand, it's going to select all areas of like color. You can use this tolerance setting in your toolbar to define how accurate um, the magic wand selects a like color. I'm going to go to my select menu and inverse. That reverses values, so now just the silhouette of the bunny is selected. Let's copy that. Make a new layer. There we are. Hide the background. Deselect. And there's our copied bunny. Of course, it's its own entity now. I can move it around. I could say create a new fill layer. I can go with something of a red nature. Move my layer move my layer around. Here's my bunny here. I can even give the bunny an additional color overlay. What do we think here? Maybe a pink color? Who knows? Put a drop shadow down. We can do whatever we want. The main point being that you can use the magic wand in an image like this to easily select color areas. Okay, let's look at one final selection technique in Photoshop. Now, when we were looking at the magic wand, you saw how you can select colors of a like area. Now, with the picture like we have in front of us, this isn't going to work really well because we have non-contiguous areas of the same color. The magic wand tends to work with contiguous areas of the same color. Now, let's start by duplicating our layer just so we can see what we did. Now, I'm also going to take my crop tool. I actually only want about that much of the image. I took this at a carnival a while back. Alright, let's do a crop there. Now we've got some unsightly folds. I think this is a canvas, piece of canvas. You can see some folds and just generally some discoloration. So let's go to select color range and I'm going to sample the background here. And let's turn our fuzziness up pretty high. You see how I can crank that on up and eventually it'll even start to gray out the darker areas. Right about there looks good. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my levels. And let's do a serious levels adjustment here. mainly interested in kind of getting that crease you see going down the center there out. Alright. That looks better. Let's go to select. Inverse. Do a little bit of an adjustment on that as well. There we are. That looks brighter already. And friendlier. A little bit of contrast. Play with that a little bit, kind of eyeball it. There we are. Let's deselect. Okay. So we started with that, and now we have that.